Hello, first graders. I am sitting in a different part of the room today because I'm going to read you a story about Martin Luther King, and it's kind of longer, so I want it to be closer to the camera so that you could really see me and see the pictures in the story. So we've talked about fiction and nonfiction before. Um, fiction is a fake story, and nonfiction is a not fake story. So nonfiction stories tell us real true things. So if you look at the cover of this book, you can see this is a real picture of Martin Luther King Jr. So this story is actually a nonfiction story. And this is the first nonfiction story that I've recorded for you this year. So I hope you can learn a little bit about Martin Luther King. Um, it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday, so that's why you have the day off. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, and hopefully you learn a little bit about Martin Luther King. So meet Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr. was a great American hero. He lost, his he lost his life working to end unfair laws for black people. He said all people should be treated the same, no matter the color of their skin. King was an important leader of the civil rights movement. So there's a picture of him. That's who Martin Luther King is. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 5th, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin grew up in the South. There were many racist laws there. Martin could not go to school with the white kids. He could not eat at a restaurant with the white people. He could not sit at them at, with them at the movies. That was just because Martin had black skin. Life in the South was not easy for people like Martin. So here's a map. He lived in the South down here. A lot of people had racist ideas too. When Martin was six years old, he had a white friend. The father of the white boy said they could not play together because Martin had black skin. Martin said, that is unfair. Today, many people refer to Martin Luther King as MLK. So in this picture, there's a caption. I'll read it to you. It says, the water fountain was for black people only. Many white people did not want to drink from the same fountains as black people. So back when Martin Luther King was a kid and then even when he grew up, people didn't think that they should treat everyone the same because of the color of their skin. However, today people get treated a lot more fairly um, as far as the color of their skin goes. I don't get treated differently than anybody else because of the color of my skin, and neither do, neither do other people. Um, sometimes this can be a problem, but back when Martin Luther King was around, he did a lot of things to change that. So this is where we're going to get into talking about that. So it says, working for a change. King wanted to change the, ba the bad way black people were treated. He felt all people should be treated the same. MLK wanted to change the laws that were unfair. He did not fight with his fists. He fought with his words. So this is him giving a speech to a church. He wanted to change the way people were. He wanted everybody to be treated fairly. King worked hard in school. He learned how to write about the unfair laws. He learned how to speak out against racism. King married Coretta Scott in, in 1953. They moved to Montgomery, Alabama in 1954. King became a pastor of a church. He and Coretta had four children. Here's a picture of Martin Luther King with his daughter Yolanda and son Martin Luther King III. Black people came to King's church to hear him speak. They wanted to learn how to change the bad laws. King believed people should never hurt each other. He chose peaceful ways like marches to fight for change. Here's a fast fact. I have a dream that one day little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. That's a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. He gave that in his famous I Have a Dream speech. Um, here's a picture of Martin Luther King greeting um, his supporters and his wife in 1960. Pretty cool. I love nonfiction stories because they have real life pictures. All right, leading the charge. In Montgomery, black people had to sit in the back of any bus. If a white rider needed a black rider's seat, the black rider had to give it up. King called for a boycott. Black people would not ride the buses until the law was changed. The bus companies lost a lot of money. The law was finally changed. So here's a picture of Martin Luther King riding a Montgomery bus after the law was changed. So there he is sitting right there. Pretty cool. So he's slowly working on helping make a change. King used other ways to fight too. He led thousands of people in marches. They sang songs about peace, freedom, and equality. 
Many people saw the marches on TV. They heard King's speeches. His words made white people understand how racist laws hurt black people. Many Americans wanted to change those bad laws. So this picture is of Martin Luther King leading many marches against racism. So here's a picture of a march. He's standing right there in the front. All those people are following him. In 1963, King led a march on Washington for jobs and freedom. He gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. About 250,000 people were there. People of all skin colors joined King in his fight against racism, but some white people hated the changes that were being made. They fought MLK and his supporters. So here's a picture of many white people and black people marching against the unfair laws. So no matter what their skin color was, they still worked together to try to change the bad laws. King went to the White House to talk to President Lyndon Johnson. He asked the president to help change the laws. Johnson said he would help. So here's a picture of Dr. King and other black leaders meeting with President Johnson. So here's Martin Luther King, and then there's President Johnson. They're having a meeting. President Johnson held past the civil, helped pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The law made it illegal to treat people unfairly because of the color of their skin. Every restaurant, store, and job would be open to all Americans. So in this picture, people line up outside the Capitol building to witness the Senate vote on the Civil Rights Bill. So this is the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., and there's a bunch of people outside waiting for the law to be passed. All right, giving his all. A white man named James Earl Ray hated the things that King stood for. On April 4, 1968, he shot and killed Martin Luther King. The police found Ray and took him to jail. Every year we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It falls on the third Monday in every January. So then this is a picture of President Barack Obama touring the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in Washington, D.C. So this is a statue. Uh, Miss Hudson has actually been here um, in Washington, D.C. It's really cool. Look how tiny. This is uh, the president. Look how small he is compared to this big statue. Isn't that crazy? And there's, that's um, President Barack Obama and then Martin Luther King's statue. Martin Luther King Jr. is a hero to people of all backgrounds and colors. He made our country a better place. He died to make life fair for all Americans. Here's a picture of Martin Luther King waving after his I Have a Dream speech. It's a big speech. Look at all those people that were there watching. All right, here's a poem about Martin Luther King Jr. He had a dream of equal rights, but he but used his words, not fists, to fight. His message and speech or march or strike beneath our skin were all alike. So here's a part for you. It says you can make a difference. Be kind and fair to all people, even if they don't look like or talk like you. So when you're at school or at home or wherever you are, and there's other people around, you treat them kind and fair no matter what they are, um, what they look like or how they talk. And another way you can make a difference is to, if you see someone being treated unfairly, is to tell a grown-up. So if you see someone is not being uh, treated very nicely, just tell a grown-up. This is just what that page looks like. It has the poem and then how you make a difference. So this is, again, a nonfiction book. It's about Martin Luther King Jr. I hope you learned a little bit from this story, and I'm going to ask you a couple questions about this um, later on. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, first graders.